The rain poured in Brussels and the talks dragged on. Situation normal. But the talk of a deal was increasing. Cabinet here was told very little. Happy with the deal? As far as I know, the negotiations are continuing. We'll just have to wait and see. So you're sorry, so how are the negotiations going? Sorry, sorry. it's all Excuse going me. marvellously. The DUP, by comparison, were being kept much more closely in the loop. The EU Brexit negotiator, Michel Barnier, suggested to the European Commission this morning that the British concession that there will be customs checks on goods crossing the Irish Sea from Britain into Northern Ireland had brought a deal close, but too late to avoid an extension to the Brexit deadline. Boris Johnson desperately wants to avoid that and told his backbench MPs this afternoon that a deal was near. But his problem group now isn't the ERG pro-Brexiteers who frustrated Theresa May's Brexit deal, but the other wing of the party. We need to make sure the backstop's sorted out and we need to be headed towards an FTA. And if all those things are done, then we'll get towards a deal we can vote for. And the whole of the ERG could be delivered for that, or do you think there'll always be some people who stay behind? Well, look, we, this is a, a moment of really profound crisis for the whole UK, and I really want the Prime Minister to get a deal that we can all at least tolerate and then vote for it. You think looking at the numbers, and I think it's going to be uh, pretty damn difficult to be perfectly honest because you know we're down 43, aren't we? I think in terms of a majority, a lot of those people who have uh, lost the party whip are not going to vote for any deal because they don't want to deliver Brexit, and the Labour Party are going to come down hard uh, from what we're hearing against anybody who dares to vote in favour of the deal. I believe in the power of persuasion rather than the power of threat. I will ask all Labour MPs to vote along with the party in opposing any deal which damages rights and protections in our society or drives us into the arms of Donald Trump. Meeting Chancellor Merkel in Toulouse, President Macron said, I want to believe that a deal is being finalised and that we can approve it tomorrow. Chancellor Merkel gave a more guarded, the news from Brussels could be worse. Uh, and gentlemen, Speaking in Brussels tonight, Excellency European Commission Speaker President Jean-Claude Juncker uh, spoke for many France, in the city. I'm obliged to express myself in English. I don't know why. Because everyone understands English, but nobody understands England. Visiting Brussels today, a cross-party delegation of second referendum supporters. They know if there's a majority in the Commons on Saturday backing a Brexit deal, the EU's patience with pro-EU forces in Britain may snap and their dream may die. A new Brexit-free news channel was launched today, gambling on a similar loss of patience here. The top stories. If there's a vote on Saturday on the deal beneath the scaffolding, it'll coincide with a pro-second referendum march begging MPs to withhold support. It could be high drama and very high stakes. And Gary joins me live now from Parliament. Gary, what is the latest today? Well, as you were saying, Boris Johnson was in Parliament not so long ago telling MPs that he thought he could glimpse the summit of Everest. He was on what he called uh, the, the Hillary step, the Edmund Hillary step, not far from the summit. But the latest tonight is that uh, the summit might just be a little bit further out of reach. It does not look as though we're going to hear uh, of a deal tonight. The sticking points remain for the EU trying to uh, work out how you cope with uh, two different VAT uh, jurisdictions in Britain and Northern Ireland and in the, uh, in the Republic of Ireland. And then for the DUP, it appears that they don't feel that they're comfortable with the answers they're getting on how Northern Ireland gives its consent to the uh, new relationship that they would be in, uh, in terms of regulations and in terms of uh, the customs border down the Irish Sea. As I understand it, the DUP delegation, though they've been pretty much camped out in uh, number 10 in the last 48 hours, have not actually seen a legal text for the deal. And it's that legal text that is going to be needed for the Saturday vote. If there is a deal agreed overnight, early tomorrow morning, whatever, the vote that the government wants to see here on Saturday becomes absolutely critical. And as you've seen from the voices in that piece, there is movement very much on the ERG wing, the Brexiteer wing of the Conservative Party, back to the fold, uh, particularly if they think the DUP are going to be inside the fold. On the other end of the party, well, there are these 21 uh, Tories who lost the whip because they were trying to stop no-deal Brexit. How many of those would actually vote against a deal? Most of them have got a better track record of voting for Brexit deals uh, than the Brexiteers themselves in the ERG. So that's a moot point. It does look as though the vote 
on Saturday, if it happens here, if there's a deal to vote on, could be on an absolute knife edge. If Boris Johnson got approval here for that, well then he'd have to bring in legislation and some of the people who object to uh, the deal hoped that they could ambush that, but he would be hoping he could use the momentum uh, of that moment, turning around, trying to get the country to pile in uh, behind him and say to the MPs, don't you dare stop this, this is, a, this is a chance to finish it. If he got a deal but it failed here on Saturday, I think all sorts of options uh, then become open, including one, which is that an awful lot of MPs who aren't ready at the moment uh, to vote for a second referendum could flip. But there are so many ifs, so many caveats, and of course we're still waiting to hear about that deal. Ifs and caveats, Gary, whatever next. Thank you very much indeed. Well, the European Parliament Vice President, Murray McGuinness, is still with me here in Brussels. Murray, it seems ridiculous, um, I mean absurd, almost sad, that having spoken about the urgency of some kind of settlement mm -hmm. because of the interview at the top of our programme, the key sticking point now seems to be VAT. Well, that's what we're hearing, and I suppose unless we're in the room, we're not sure. And I think we need to be cautious, because unless everything is agreed, nothing is agreed. Having said that, there's been extraordinary things happened in the last five days, because none of us would have written the script that the British Prime Minister would come, that the negotiations would accelerate, that we believe there's been movement on the key issues yeah. around that issue of the invisible border on the island of Ireland. Um, and what next, I think, is what we're worried about. Will there be a legal text this evening? I am not so sure. If there's one issue still to be resolved then I presume they have to go back into the negotiations will they go through the night mm. they've had a late night last night so will things be ready for tomorrow and I think that's the key timeline and deadline for the British but you're Prime so Minister. Right. You know five days ago we mm. were all in the dark cellar of gloom and now yeah. we're talking about you know po possibly a deal tomorrow what has changed here is it Boris Johnson's character perhaps his charm is it the clock ticking you know, is it the changed political landscape? Is it the Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar? Well, maybe it's all of the above, but I would just say the dark gloom still exists from my point of view because I'd rather the UK remain. So I, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. while I'm happy that there's progress towards a deal because this has got to be resolved, I think that perhaps the two leaders met on Friday and there was a realisation in that exchange, which was three hours, that something had to be done and that we couldn't allow this uncertainty to last and that we, could, we had to do something this week because the leaders were meeting. Mm. Perhaps in that moment, the British Prime Minister realised that the ball was in his court. He mm. needed to act. And act he has. I won't really say any more until I see the legal text. Right. But they've been burnt here before, haven't they? Because there was a deal with Theresa May, mm. which they thought they could sign off on. And, you know, Michel Barney was parading his newborn baby, 485 pages of it around, you know, the building. And a very here. tough delivery, remember? Exactly. Very a very tough, tough delivery. delivery. And it didn't work in the House of Commons. Indeed. Are they worried that they will, are they saying, we'll only sign off on this thing if we're absolutely certain that Boris Johnson can get the numbers? Will he be able to give us that certainty? I don't think anyone knows. Perhaps you're were closer to it, mm. the numbers in the House of Commons. I met a delegation of Remain MPs today. And what were they And they you? were saying, look, d you know, don't count it because not so sure if Labour will vote for something mm. that was talking about lowering standards, mm. for example. Mm. So I think what's, what's happening today is interesting, but it's only a small part of a story that will continue. And I'm not so sure, listening to the colleagues from the House of Commons, if they will allow something go through on Saturday. Mm. I mean, if it's only a draft legal text agreed tomorrow, and that's a big if, yeah. There's not enough time to look at the details. So, so maybe. The extension is almost inevitable. Well, this is the big question. Right. Will the leaders grant that? I think the Prime Minister is required to request mm. it. Will he want to do that? This is all back to speculation again. But we are in a very different place. And I think Michel Barnier, I thought yesterday, he, you know, he, he had yeah. a lot on his shoulders. Perhaps tonight he has less on his shoulders. Perhaps he's, he's still up talking to ambassadors right now. He is. Thank you very much, Thank Maureen you. McGuinness. Well, that's all from Brussels for now. We are going to be here tomorrow for the EU summit, which could turn out to be historic if there is an agreement. Still ifs, still buts, still caveats. But for now, with great certainty, back to Cathy in the studio. Thanks, Matt. Well, I'm joined now from Westminster by Andrew Bridgen, a leading member of the Brexit supporting ERG, and here in the studio by Alison McGovern, the Labour MP who supports a second referendum. Turn to Andrew Bridgen first. A progress on this deal, but the DUP remains the stumbling block. Are you losing patience with them? No, not at all. Um, if the DUP can't support the, the deal that the Prime Minister brings back, that means you effectively haven't got the support of both communities uh, in Northern Ireland, and that's in breach of the Good Friday Agreement. Um, and you'll stick with the DUP, will you? You'll vote as a bloc. 
I'm not saying that. I, am, I want to see the, the legal text of the final deal. I'm not Joe Swinson or Jeremy Corbyn. I'm not going to declare which way I'm going to vote without reading the, the detail of the deal. But if the DUP can't support it, it makes that much harder for me to support. OK, so if the deal is nearly there, but there are a few sort of dots and dots of and I's of I's and crosses of T's to get through, would you back a short extension in that scenario? Well, I think what we're going to see tomorrow is there's a strong rumour that Labour MPs are actually going to vote against us sitting on Saturday, purely trying to delay Brexit political point scoring to try and force the, uh, the Ben Act, the Surrender Act, into play and, and try and humiliate the Prime Minister. And that, quite honestly, your viewers need to see what's going on in this Parliament. And quite honestly, it's a disgrace, Cathy. Well, let me put that to Alison McGovern then. Uh, the Ben Act that you refer to there, the Act um, preventing us crashing out with a no deal. Is that the case that you're going to prevent us sitting on Saturday? Um, no, and I, I hate to trade rumours with Andrew, but as I understand it, that was a rumour put about by Tory MPs to try and stir things up. So, you know, I don't know where that rumour has come from. But, um, so you'll back the Commons sitting on Saturday with your colleagues, will you? We, sh we should sit on Saturday, and, and I will back that, because we are dealing with a situation where, as Andrew just said, we haven't even got a legal text. We, we ought to be saying to the Prime Minister, you know, whatever you think of Brexit, this is not a way to go about it. When we had the um, May agreement, we had a full economic forecast promise that wasn't delivered. We didn't have enough scrutiny in that process. How can this be good enough? It's Wednesday. We don't even know what we're supposed to be deciding on. So, so you think there needs to be an extension? I, I think... I, I find it hard to imagine how we can't have an extension in this situation. OK, let me but put it's for that the Prime back. Minister to come forward and say, what is going on? Right, let me put that back to Andrew Bridgen, because I did ask you about whether you'd back a short extension and you threw it back to Labour. So let me ask you that question again. Um, I would want to get out uh, with or without a deal on the 31st of October in line with the Prime Minister's pledge. But um, Even I wonder, if you're I very if I near a deal Alan, at that Alison point. Alison again. Will, will, Even if you're will, will very near a deal at that Labor, point. Will she pledge that Labour aren't going to try and seize control of the order paper so they'll actually, on Saturday, let the government bring forward the, ask, the deal I'll, if it exists? I'll ask her that in a moment, but will you, if you're very near a deal and Boris Johnson comes to you and says, I've got to, you know, I do or die, but I'll give it a few more days, would you back a short extension? I wouldn't publicly back that at this stage because I think you're creating Privately? an inevitability because deadlines are there because negotiations go down to the deadlines. That's why we need deadlines so we get those negotiations finished and that's where I stand at the moment. I noticed you said you wouldn't publicly back an extension. Are you giving the Prime Minister a nod and a wink, though? No, not at all, because I think, you know, any sign that we're willing to extend, that's where we're going to be heading. I think we've got to be firm. We promised the people we leave on the 31st of October and... You know, people are tired of politicians breaking their word, quite honestly. Just to return to our top story with you, uh, our interview with the new IRA, who said that they would... Um, uh, told us that any border, hard or soft, would be a, a target of an attack. What's, what do you make of that? Well, I think the fact that you put those terror groups, um, self-confessed murderers, on your programme and gave them the oxygen of publicity, I think it's, it is deeply... Uh, deeply irresponsible, recklessly irresponsible. Um, they are a fringe group that barely represent themselves on the island of Ireland. And um, you know, I think you've you've made a grave mistake by having them on your program. Quite honestly. Well, well in our defence, I should say that we did ask some hard-hitting, challenging questions. We did challenge uh, the interviewee on several areas. I don't know if you saw the interview, um, but just that was the editorial thought process that went through behind it. I think it's a huge mistake. Andrew Bridgen, thank you very much. Just returning to Ali McGovern on um, uh, Brexit now. Um, do you believe that you have sufficient numbers to push through um, a second referendum to attach that to any vote on Saturday? Well, the first thing is for the Prime Minister, as I've said, for the Prime Minister to bring forward what his proposals are. We don't know what the agreement will look like and we've got no legal text. I think that given the deadlock in the House of Commons, giving the public the final say is the way forward. And I think that we've seen more and more people coming to that conclusion. Would you back a Boris see... Johnson deal if he said, yeah, I'll put it to a second referendum? Unlikely, I know, but would you do that? Well, I would like to see a, a credible form of Brexit. 
and we don't know what this deal is. So it feels like, you know, we're talking about something that I think Boris Johnson himself said was like still covered in mist. So it's very hard to know. If Boris Johnson brings forward a credible form of Brexit and he wants to give the public the final say, I think lots of us would uh, consider that. But and to put to you... But that doesn't, we doesn't seem like we're anywhere near there at okay. the moment. And before we've got that legal text, mm -hmm. it's hard to say. The, the one thing that I do know is that there's a majority in the Commons to stop no deal, because that would be and so damaging to To put country. Andrew Bridgen's question to you, you would seize control of the order paper? You're prepared to do that on Saturday? I think we've seen backbenchers work cross-party to make sure that our country's interests are protected. Of course, Andrew Bridgen and his colleagues in the ERG don't like being in a minority, but they do support a kind of Brexit that would be extraordinarily damaging for our country. And that's why the cross-party group um, of backbench members of parliament have worked together to make sure that we can stop no deal. And as I asked Andrew Bridgen about our top story, the interview with the new IRA member, um, he was pretty harsh on that. What is your view? Well, I agree with the comments made by Jonathan Powell and, and um, other um, people who, who you spoke to earlier in the programme. It's an absolute disgrace um, what was said there. And we have to make sure there is no going backwards in Northern Ireland.